All right, so what does the Army, Christianity, and your parents, what do they have to do with determining your drive, with helping you be driven every single day, with helping you wake up every morning with motivation? Because I know that's your problem. I know that you're not consistent. I hear this every single day, not just from people who were like me back when I was 25 years old, stuck and struggling and not sure what to do. No, I hear this from people that pay me $2,000 a month for coaching. They say, Craig, I need more drive. I should have been more driven today. I don't know how you do it. And the answer comes in those, or from those three sources. Again, the army, Christianity, and your parents. So let's look at the first one, the army. I always say that people have made incredible sacrifices for us, right? If you go back, you can go all the way back in history, but if you go back to World War II, the greatest generation, those men in the army, the armies of the world that fought against Hitler, they were taken from their families at age 18, 19, 25, whatever it was, right? Shipped across the ocean, and as we think, oh, we're making sacrifices by not going out in public right now. No, these people sacrificed their lives. They went and sacrificed their freedom so that you and I could have freedom. And it bothers me. It just boggles my mind why someone would not be driven and motivated every single day just out of the price, the debt that we need to pay back to those people who sacrificed everything for us. So if you're struggling to get out of bed, you're like, oh, I don't have any motivation this morning to go and do my work, to grow my business, or, oh, you know what, things are kind of hard, I'm just gonna skip it today. Understand that there was once a 21-year-old man, well, millions of 20-year-old and 18-year-old men stuck in Europe, stuck in trenches, stuck fighting, stuck in trenches for days, not able to get out, change their clothes, go to the bathroom, they were stuck in little foxholes, and they had no choice. They had no choice but to defend your grandparents' freedom, your and your future freedom. If that's not enough, here's the second point. And it comes from my friend Ed Milet, who is a very religious man. And he says, he has this great analogy or this great picture that you can really understand. And he says, Craig, I believe, because he believes in, in Jesus and God, he believes that when he goes to heaven, he will meet the Ed Milet that God allowed him to possibly be this great, great man. And every day, Ed Milet wakes up and says, I got to get closer to that best version of me. And now, whether you're religious or not, we all believe that there's a best version of ourself. And so if you are playing below, if you are not waking up every single day and trying to grow, if you are not improving, if you're not studying, if you're not doing those things, then what you need to do is realize that you'll never become your best self. You'll always be playing short. You'll never surround yourself with better people. You'll always say, uh, you know what, I'm too scared to do it. No, your best self would not be scared. And so again, it doesn't matter if you're religious or not. Just understand that there is a best version of you. And you're not there yet. There's no way you're there yet. It doesn't matter if you're 65 or 16. There's a long way to go. We can always be getting better. Now, you may not become the best in the world at something, but you can become better than you are today. And if that doesn't drive you, if that doesn't motivate you to get up and make the most of your circumstances, whatever they are, well, finally, we have to get to the third factor. Maybe this will get you off the couch. Maybe this will get you to stop watching motivational rants on YouTube. And maybe it'll get you to take that action. And that third thing that I want you to think about is your parents. Think about the sacrifices they made for you. You know, maybe you had a mom who raised you all on her own and she worked two part-time jobs. Maybe you just had two really great parents and you grew up and they got along great, they had a great marriage, but they still sacrificed. They got up in the middle of the night to change your diaper, to stop you screaming. Your mother carried you for nine months through pain and then went through painful labor. Like, how could you not? How could you not give it your all every single day knowing what your parents sacrificed for you? And those are just 
two people, maybe even just one person in some cases who did all the sacrificing. So for me, every single day I wake up, I get up at 3.57 a.m., I walk my dog, I do a short meditation, and I get down to the most important work that must be done in my business. I know that there's people out there depending on me. So if you want to think of a fourth factor, stop thinking about you, okay? It's not about you. It's about them. It's about all of those people who, without your product, service, coaching, books, whatever it is that you provide, would be going to bed crying themselves to sleep because they couldn't find you on Instagram. They couldn't find your book in the library or your bookstore because you haven't written it yet. They couldn't find your video on YouTube because you're too scared of the criticism that you're going to get. And you will get it. But you're too scared. You're going to protect your ego and let them suffer. It's not about you. If you've ever watched any of the Marvel superhero movies, there's one called Doctor Strange. And I, I was like, I don't know who this guy is. I don't know why I'm going to watch this movie. But I'm so glad I watched it because of one scene at the end of the movie, I was like, Am I watching like an amazing motivational personal development video? And it's when he's with the ancient one, Dr. Strange is with the ancient one on that balcony and they're overlooking the city. And she goes, you know, it's not about you. And it still gives me goosebumps right now just thinking about that scene. In fact, I love that scene so much I put it in my book, Unstoppable, because I wanted to remind people that it is not about you. It is about everyone else. So put your ego aside, stop worrying about the criticism, and start getting out there and creating the content, the coaching, the courses that will serve other people. Now, you know what, I've already given you four, I'm going to give you the fifth. The fifth thing that, that gives me the drive and motivation to show up every single day. And it is the blessings. I am, I am fortunate beyond belief. I have all my senses. I have all my limbs. I can chew bubblegum and walk at the same time. I'm, you know, I'm doing great. And then I know that there are other people in circumstances worse than me, you know, that one might judge worse circumstances, who are doing more than me. They're exceeding more than I am. And, and to sit there and think that I'm not going to do my best today, to sit there and think I'm just going to take the day off because I don't have any motivation, I just don't want to do anything. I just want to lie here in bed. Like that drives me nuts, 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 nuts that anybody would think that way when they have been given so many blessings. I was fortunate enough to know a man named Sean Stevenson. He was known as a three foot giant. Sean Stevenson was one of the greatest motivational speakers of all time, but he was born with a disease where if he sneezed, he could break a bone. He broke his bones 280 times in his life. 280 times. He broke his femurs four times because of his brittle bones. But that did not stop him from becoming a doctor of therapy. He was a certified therapist. I went to him because I needed help overcoming my anxiety. He was the greatest motivational speaker I've ever seen. And he said, when you do a speech, you need to make them laugh, make them cry, and change their lives. And I saw him do 10-minute speeches where he did that to the entire audience of millionaires. Absolutely amazing. Now, Sean passed away a couple of years ago because he banged his head. And when you have brittle bones, that can't happen. There was one small accident that stopped a man who had already impacted over 50 million people. He had one video on Facebook that was watched 50 million times. And I thought, man, my life, where I have been given all these blessings, and here my friend Sean has had his life taken from him. He's had, first of all, he had all those obstacles in his way, and he has done more than I have already. That's not, that's not acceptable for me to stay in bed. That's not acceptable for me to hit snooze. That's not acceptable for me to do anything less than my best. That's not acceptable for me not to strive for my best self. That's not acceptable for me to forget the sacrifices that other people made. That's not acceptable. And so if you think that you're going to go and find motivation to get out of bed in the morning from YouTube, from Facebook, from a quote from Tony Robbins, you're fooling yourself. Because all motivation is internal. It comes from your heart, comes from your mind. You have to find the reason. The reason to get up and do your best, to be your best self, to strive to get better every single day. 
And when you do that, you know what? You're going to be very, very satisfied. It doesn't matter if you make a million dollars or a hundred million dollars or even a hundred thousand dollars. Just knowing, knowing that you are doing your best, pushing yourself and getting better every day will give you that satisfaction at the end of the day that you have done your best. And all those other people, you know, half, half heartedly doing things in life, even if they have more money than you, will never have the satisfaction and fulfillment that you will have from knowing that people have laid down their lives for you and you are honoring them. That their, your parents gave their best years of their life to give you a future. That will make you motivated and driven to do your best work. So my friend, count your blessings, be your best self, and strive to get better every day. And it doesn't matter where you are in life right now, you're going to be more driven tomorrow, and that's going to bring you to a better spot tomorrow. So what I want you to do is drop a comment down below and promise me, just make this a public accountability that you are going to get better every single day, that you are not going to suffer from a lack of drive. You are going to commit to yourself and get up every day and be your best self. So drop that comment down below. And if you want to ask me a question, you want to follow up on this, or you want to get coaching to be your best self and build that business that does impact millions of people, then go to craigvalentine.com and send me a message, okay? I can't wait to hear from you because I know that in becoming my best self, I have to help you become your best self too.